Hello and welcome to the Australian Sailing Nas National Club Participation Webinar. Thank you for joining us. Um, we've had well over 100 registrations and it really is wonderful to have so many club, class, associations and coaches join, join us here tonight. My name is Sarah Ogilvy. I'm the Head of Sport Development and Growth for Australian Sailing. And tonight, together with Ian Leeson, um, National Participation Man Manager, we will deliver this webinar. So the purpose of tonight is to provide more supporting information about the recently released club participation programs. Tonight you will learn more on why the programs have been developed. Hopefully you'll leave the webinar with clarity on what they are, understand who the participation programs are for and who delivers the programs. You'll know where you can get the resources and the support to plan, deliver successful programs. Plus, you'll gain further insight into what is ready now and what's on the way. What we won't go over tonight is the history of the project. If you'd like to not learn more about how the programs were designed and developed, you can review the club conference presentations of 2021 and 2022, and there's other updates which came through Club News and are available on the Australian Sailing website. I would like to take the opportunity now though to thank the National Working Group uh, for their work and their opinions over the last 18 months uh, that guided the decisions to today. Additionally, thank you to the clubs, classes and cl coaches who uh, continue to work with us one on one to pilot the material so that this work can continually to develop and improve for the benefits of everyone. After the presentation tonight, there will be time for questions. So you can post your questions in the chat from now. Some may be answered along the way from the AS team, but we will try to get to as many as possible. Um, and if we don't get to them, please contact us after the webinar and we'll ensure to get those questions answered. So why and, and what are the programs and, and why? This screen and the images on the right is a snapshot of club participation programs. Club participation programs are for your club and class members. They're programs that can be delivered for any class of boat or board, any discipline of boat or board, any age person. The programs can be delivered in mixed fleets or single class. It's up to the club and class to collaborate with the coaches on how they want to deliver the programs to members. For example, you could have a mixed keelboat program, um, for example, J70s and Elliot's, or you could have single class programs, say in Sharpies, Sabres, Flying Elevens, or one of the emerging foiling classes. Just appreciate that the classes, sorry, the um, programs have been designed for the sailor and their interests and enjoyment in sailing. Two in the design, um, we're fostering the development of young people as they are the future of clubs and classes. The programs have been designed with flexibility in delivery and also for consistency of delivery across Australia so that we they can be repeated and are sustainable even when committees and coaches change. The programs are in three levels, which sit on steps four through to six of our current sailing pathway. So first is the well-known Green Fleet, which today has been delivered quite different around the country and traditionally delivered to juniors. We really now encourage clubs and class associations to open this offer to all ages. 
Next is intermediate fleet. And this one we expect to be quite broad in participation and is probably most of your current membership. And then there's advanced fleet where we expect class associations interested in delivering this program and clubs who offer coaching for the whole season or even who are open and um, offer coaching for 10 to 12 months of the year. So why club participation programs? Firstly, we, sailing, we already have great learn to sail programs. There's tackers and there's out there, we have keelboat, dinghy and board programs. And now here are the next stages of the, which is the club participation programs. They were designed with two key outcomes for retention of participants in learning to sail to lifelong members and two for participation growth in sailing at clubs and classes. So let's move on to the program guide. If you've not yet read the guide, it is available on the Participation Hub on the Australian Sailing website. The guide is detailed, so tonight I will not go through the guide line, line by line. However, I will touch on each level of the program in some way. The guide, it was, it's a res, it was a, it's been developed as a resource for clubs and classes and the coach to use and to refer to often. It's to help to skill up and transfer knowledge when committees and coaches change. And it also gives concepts in it to market and talk to your members about the programs. Essentially, it's your framework of the programs. So as I said, this guide is for clubs, classes and the coaches. Plus, it is for most people in our sport. Um, it's for those who play roles in administration and it's also a really helpful guide for parents or other stakeholders. So in the program, in the guide, there's blueprints of the three programs and then there's also profiles of the sailor and coach, how the sailors and coach participate and develop. So before we get into the blueprints and profiles. I'd, let's just look at the aims of the programs. Let's assume your club either delivers a Discover Sailing Centre, Keelboat, Dingy or Board program, or offers other learn to sail opportunities. The club participation programs have been designed with an assumed level of competency achieved by participating in these programs. So with Greenfleet, Greenfleet's building upon the fundamental sailing skills. So emphasising fun in fundamental so that the sailor gains confidence and independence on the water. The blueprints, which I'll get to in a moment, provide information on who sails in Greenfleet, who delivers it, what equipment looks like and more. In the intermediate fleet is where the sailor is now independent in their sailing and they're practicing those fundamental now racing skills and their technical skills. It's anticipated that they'll be active in sailing for life and the intermediate fleet is designed for people who we would say are your weekend sailors who would like to improve their sailing skills and racing skills who want some recreational activity and enjoy the social side of learning with others. We see Intermediate Fleet as a broad offering and one that is inclusive of many classes and people could be in Intermediate Fleet across their sailing life, changing classes and disciplines and just continually developing in sailing. And the last one is Advanced Fleet where the program aims to support training for events and performance aspirations in state or national championships. 
So Advanced Fleet is designed for those sailors who are training to compete, where that competition such as the Nationals. So their coaching is regular and they would generally have an extra personal commitment to, to this um, program. Plus there'd be commitment to club and class association racing and competition. So let's look at a blueprint. Each program blueprint is a plan on a page. On this page, it's got nine components, which include on water and off water activity, equipment, leadership, support, competition, and lots more. So right now I'll highlight um, one component in the green fleet. So here we're looking at equipment. It's expected there would be some offering of both accessing club owned equipment and some will participate in Green Fleet using privately owned equipment. This is the stage where the sailors have moved from learning to sail and have not yet been uh, are not yet fully confident and ready in a decision as to which boat or board they want to sail and purchase. So this is a time where we can lose participants and members by putting too many barriers in place in front of them and therefore supporting them through a loan or a lease system is crucial in helping people to remain in our sport. Here we can look at the intermediate fleet and let's look at the component of uh, programs. The design of intermediate fleet program, we anticipate that or suggest that sessions would be one or two times per week, depending on the outcomes of the program for the club and the class, and importantly, the sailor. We, as we know uh, the program aims, we assume that the person has an interest in practicing their racing and developing their technical skills in the class they sail. So intermediate fleet, we offer resources to support this such as there's a four to five month, month coaching plan on a page. Um, for example, you might have a group of master sailors wishing to go to a states or a regional event. The coach can deliver a progressive skill development program for this group with suggested coaching material available and progression sheets for the coach to access. So this is an example of that plan on a page resource just mentioned. This is the spring summer intermediate plan that the coaches have access to. So let's think again about that masters group who are wanting to attend state champs. You can see in the highlighted area on the right on the coaches plan for this group of sailors that in October it would be recommended that they have begun um, some club racing and the training, they'd be working on their tacking, trimming and steering and the skills for low speed control. So finally, in the guide are the sailor and coach profiles. Two like the blueprints, the, the profiles give overview of describing both the sailor and the coach across the nine components. The content includes what they're doing, how progression occurs and how they are supported. Knowing that the sailor and coach requires support from all parts of the club or class and us as the sport in planning, programming, education and training. Again, the coach and sailor profiles can be used by many, including the parents and those other interested um, parties. So we're going to look at a profile before I'll um, then hand over to Ian. So what's in a profile? As I said, they've got the nine components and here we'll look at competition. The coach 
at Advanced Fleet is an accredited sailing coach, and therefore we know they have the racing experience, the technical knowledge and the skills to provide coaching that is an enabler for the sailors to achieve their goals in events such as the national championships. What this means is the sailor can expect to be receiving coaching appropriate to their interests in competition, as the coach has access to the supporting resources and education to deliver the advanced coaching. So with these snapshots of the profiles here and previously the blueprints, let's move on to hearing about um, how to deliver successful club participation programs. And so with that, I'd like to hand over to Ian Leeson, National Participation Manager. Cool. So thanks, Sarah. Um, so now we know a little bit more around the club participation programs and begin to understand where we can use them in our clubs and class um, situations. I want to now move on to some more sort of practical ways to help begin to plan and prepare and begin delivering the program, hopefully this season and beyond. Just before I jump into that, I just wanted to share this slide, which I think is quite an interesting insight. Basically, what the slide's saying is that quality experiences spread through word of mouth so you can do we can have all the best programs in the world such as tackers out there board programs and now obviously the club participation programs but if we're not delivering a great experience with any of these programs people are not going to want to come back and continue and go on and become lifelong sailors So moving on from that, how do we go around delivering successful programs and quality experiences? I think we can sort of essentially break it into three key ingredients, which are really visioning, preparation, and then delivery. So visioning, essentially where you want your club's participation or club and class participation to be, in say three to four years time, having a, an end goal in mind of what you think is great participation for your situation. Then working back from that incrementally, which will create smaller steps. After the visioning, it's then around preparing to action that vision. So preparing coaches to deliver the programs, um, preparing the environment that they're going to be delivering it in, preparing the stakeholders, so both if it if it's a youth program, parents and obviously sailors in all programs, and also other club members about how they may be able to engage with the programs and opportunities for them. And then quality delivery involving whole of club engagement in supporting the coaches to deliver successful programs. Just on this next slide now, to delve in a little bit further and to talk about some, I suppose, practical ways to start to think about some of that. So if we think of visioning, some questions that you might start off with would be around what's your club's overall strategic priorities in relation to participation? As I said a moment ago, where do you want your club to be in three, four, five years time? What did you deliver last year? And is what you delivered moving you closer towards what you want that outcome to be and what you want that vision to be? If it worked well, great, keep doing it. If things didn't work or could have worked better, what were they? And how could you change that for this season ahead and begin to implement some key changes into the delivery? Once you start to break down what those vision items are, you end up with a bit of an action plan around 
starting to deliver great experiences at your club. Once you have that action plan, you begin then to prepare to tick off the list, essentially. So using your plan, you may identify that you need to train more or newer new coaches or instructors to deliver the programs. It may be sourcing different equipment that you want to implement a new program. Inducting, so setting up and planning induction training for your instructors and coaches so that everybody understands the vision. And beginning to provide information to the sailors and to the stakeholders around what what you're going to deliver and how you're going to go about it to support them for them to grow into the club programs. Then once you've got a plan and you're prepared to deliver that plan, it's then on to the actual delivery. And as Sarah mentioned earlier, and I'll just highlight in a moment, we've got some pre-created resources obviously to help you deliver this. And that ranges from session plans for the coaches, um, sailor progress sheets, there's parent information um, presentations and handbooks to help prepare your stakeholders, and then other training activities and recommendations. So moving on to the delivery aspect now and looking a bit more around some of the resources and some of the the setup of the programs and, and how you can physically support the delivery. So all of the participation programs are ready now to set up in your club's rev sport portals and they'd just be set up the same way that you would set in any other activity at your club up through rev. They're free for clubs to to do. Um, there's no participation fee um, or participant fee that comes back to Australian sailing. So it, it's purely if you want to charge your members, that's your prerogative and that's you, you would take the whole income. Um, obviously, by setting them up online, it reduces admin burden and equally then at the end of the program, you can provide a small reward to the participant by um, certification. On the resources, um, on the participation resource hub, there's a range of resources to support with the delivery. So this slide is just a bit of a snapshot of some of the items that are there, but there's quick wins for coaches and clubs around increasing participation. There's volunteer, um, uh, descriptions for role descriptions, the presentations to help run instructor and coach induction sessions, plus obviously all of the content resources for the sessions for the coaches to deliver each of the each of the stages. If you're keen and go away and looking for some more support on any of this, your, your primary contact point is your local club service um, club support officer in your state offices. Obviously also through the communications from Australian Sailing, so Club News, Nautical News, and soon to come to coaches and instructors inboxes is Training in Focus, which is specifically for instructors and coaches. In those communications, we'll detail what's coming and what's available and when things are new. Everything that's there in the participation hub at the moment is the, the priorities of the National Working Group when this was first sort of envisaged. All of those resources that will get added on over time and we'll certainly be keen on any feedback around anything that's there now plus anything that clubs and classes and coaches would find useful for them to deliver, because we can certainly take that on board and start to look at, at creating further resources to, to see, the, to see the, the sessions and the programme succeed. OK, so just to summarise, really, and begin to wrap this up before we get into some questions. So summary really of the benefits of the clubs is 
I think like Sarah said earlier, increasing member retention and recruitment, attracting new participants to to either join or become more active in the club that are already members. So for example, setting up an intermediate fleet coaching program and getting some of those key Saturday sailors to want to increase their skills um, and have fun doing so at the club. Begins to improve culture and reduce the risks associated with delivering training and hopefully motivates members and brings new volunteers through wanting to get involved with new programmes. The benefit for members is people can participate in, their, in sailing on their own terms. They can improve physical skills and movement, be inspired to participate for longer or for life, hopefully, and know that they're in a safe, inclusive sport and getting a quality experience. So that pretty much wraps up the main body of the presentation and we've allowed plenty of time for questions. So thanks everyone for your time this evening and hopefully you've gone away with some ideas to help begin to deliver and grow participation at your clubs this year. Um, we'll move on to the questions, which I can see there's some that have been posted in the chat here. And I'll uh, I'll begin by reading some out and I, between Sarah and I, we will answer them as best we can as we move through. So the first question, um, how much racing is included in the Intermediate Fleet programme? Can we run it without any racing? Sarah, do you want to grab that one to start with? Absolutely. Um, thanks, Ian. So the Intermediate Fleet um, encourages learning to focus on improving skills, those fundamental racing skills. So it's not about tactics and strategy, for example. Um, it's a program to increase those um, opportunities um, for some racing skills. We have learnt from the, uh, the testing that was done last summer that intermediate um, was they were intermediate sailors were still keen for the social recreational enjoyment um, learning together so there's not so much racing focus um, and we encourage so some of the uh, drills as such within the session plans for the coaches they might not necessarily they might be skills to improve uh, skills within racing but they're not um, I would say uh, performance focused, yeah. Um, okay. I'll do the next one, Ian. If, you're, if our club is already running regular Saturday morning training, would this effectively be the Green Intermediate Fleet Program? That's a difficult question I would say to answer. You might be able to help me in a moment. I would say it depends on the, the training that you're running. Um, I would say if they've already learnt to sail and they have those foundation um, learn to sail skills, uh, those basis of the, the process to um, tack and jive, for example. If you're running training, that is um, very much a coaching program uh, where it's focused on the group and the, those sailors and their interests. I would say that, yes, um, that you would be running a Green Fleet program without um, obviously being able to see it right now. Did you want to add something, Ian? Yeah, and so I'll just add into that one as well, and then I can um, read out the next question. Um, yeah, so just adding on to what Sarah said then, I think it's difficult to know without knowing the precise situation, but what I would recommend is, so the blueprint, um, so the participation guide in there is the sailor profiles. So you can essentially look at the sailors that you're currently delivering training to on your Saturday morning program and see where they fit in that profile. And if they all are pretty much in the Greenfleet profile, then that would be your Greenfleet training program on a Saturday. If they're in the intermediate, then they'd be intermediate. 
if they're a mix, then you might look at still running the training together, but having perhaps a coach on each, each, and it depends again on the number of sailors in the program, but running the training together, but you might have a coach looking after the more green fleet orientated delivery and a coach looking after the intermediate orientated delivery. That was, that was just wanted to add, add on to that question. Um, the next one, if we have a couple of fleets in our program, how do the instructor foundation coach and sailing coach qualification fit? If we have three classes slash fleets, what is required? Good question. So essentially the instructor qualification is what is delivering your learn to programs, whether that be tackers or whether it be out there or whether it be um, start keel boating. So that's where the instructor fits in. If you think of a, a standard pathway diagram, steps one to three. The foundation coach qualification is for coaches delivering green fleet. So step four, and then the sailing coach qualification is for those delivering intermediate or advanced fleet. So hopefully I think that one that answers that question. Um, I'll cover the, la the the next one there and then I might hand over to Sarah. Um, are there any ASCs involved in these programs? No, none at all. So the the access to the resources is all on the website now and you can go and look at it. The coach specific resources as in the um, I suppose curriculum materials that is in a hidden section, but all coaches as long as they're qualified have access to setting up the programs and delivering them through Rev Sport 100% free, no fees go anywhere to us. Um, the next one, Sarah, hand over to you. Did you want to take the the next one? Yeah, yeah great. Thanks, Ian. Um, the next quote question. Are there fixed coach? Oh, great question. Are there fixed coach to participant ratios, as in the tackers and start sailing programs? Um, so the foundation coach. Uh, so the foundation coach. Firstly, let's get to the foundation coach because it will help answer this question. The foundation coach um, is a new coach um, uh, certification coming, which is. Um, will be just released soon, a free online course for our instructors to learn the fundamental or the foundation coaching skills. That means that that foundation coach can be an assistant to an, a, a sailing coach who sailing coaches aren't, uh, don't have a fixed ratio. Um, but as, as a foundation coach, if a foundation coach was running Greenfleet on their own, then yes, their, their, their ratios would remain the same. The reason for this is that the foundation coaches we expect um, that there, there are other safety requirements and safety boat courses, for example, that a sailing coach goes through um, and the the added sort of experience that they've had, technical experiences that they've had. So to get back to that, that question, are there fixed coach to participant ratios? There is still for the foundation coach when they are coaching on their own but they can then be an assistant coach to a sailing coach. So for example, you might end, end up with quite a large fleet. Um, let's say you've got quite a large intermediate fleet. And as a coach, I've, I've done my risk assessment and thought, yeah, this is just too many boats to have under, under me as, you know, under my wings. And it's a great opportunity to have um, the assistant coach, the foundation coach with me. Um, hopefully that answers that question for you. It looks like we've got one more question. Um, maybe Ian, what if you would you like me to pass it over to you to answer the last question? Unless any more come in, um, but if you'd like to answer the last question for the evening, yeah, no problem. Um, so the last question there is: the skill attainment for each fleet checked off in Rev Sport, or is this managed in a spreadsheet or paper copy by the coaches? That is a great question and has also just given me a suggestion to think about. So currently the progression sheets are um, essentially, it, it's not in Rev Sport currently. They're, they're downloadable, they're sitting in the, the resource hub. Um, 
so to answer the question, they are not in Rev Sport. They are basically a yeah an Excel sheet or a spreadsheet to to tick and write comments in. However, that has given me a thought for something that we may be able to look into doing in Rev Sport that would tie into the completion certificate at the end of it. So hopefully that answers that question. There's more questions, Zoe. So uh, if you want to keep going. OK, uh, <laughs> OK, there's a couple more come up. How critical is it to have a coach for each of these stages? I think very critical. Um, without you don't have to have a foundation coach to deliver Greenfleet. A sailing coach could be delivering Greenfleet. But it's yeah, to me, it's very important that there is a coach with the group that you're delivering. It's not saying that every club needs to deliver green fleet and intermediate fleet and advanced because you'll choose what is most suitable for your standard of sailors. But if you're going to deliver a programme, you definitely need to have a coach to deliver it. Um, hey, we've got more questions coming in now. Is it possible to run a programme across more than one sailor profile? Sarah, do you or would you like to answer that one? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, in the pilot programmes that we ran last year, you know, these, these programmes have been designed for big clubs and the small clubs. And this is where there is flexibility. And this is where it's really, I guess it goes back to Ian's question before, or the question that Ian um, answered about how critical it is to have coaches deliver these programs. Coaches have the skills, have been, you know, they have the skills, um, those fundamental coaching skills to adapt the programs to suit the sailors um, and to adapt their sessions to suit the sailors. So it is possible to run programs across more than one sailor. You could have um, profile, you can have uh, in our pilot programs, we did have uh, one pilot program who had intermediate level sailors and green level sailors in the same group, but it was how the coach uh, modified and uh, those uh, activities and um, exercises to suit um, each, each of those individuals. So that's where the benefits of um, the coaches and their skills come into play. Uh, we've still got some more. Um, what if we don't currently have any AS qualified coaches at our club? Um, so, uh, how, do, how can we get access to the resources? Yeah, so the, the resources for the coaches are there for the coaches. Um, there because some of them, uh, you know, for example, advanced fleet is their six and 12 month plans where there is considered progression and skill development to help people to get to a nationals, for example. So those coach, those resources are for the coaches. Um, the there is another question here and it looks like it might be the last question. Um, We'll see how we go, but the last at the moment, the last question is how often are the coaches courses being run at the moment pre season? There's quite a few coaches courses. So if you just go to the coach finder um, or the course finder on the Australian sailing website, there, there should be um, one in most states coming up over the next month. Look with that, it looks oh, they've just jumped in. Let's take this last question. Um, shall we? Um, where does the original instructor fit with all this coaching, especially for small programs or classes? Ian, would you like to answer the, the last yeah. question? For yeah, the happy, happy to do this one. This is the last one. Um, OK, so where does the original instructor, I assume that means, where, do, where does the instructor qualification fit with all the coaching that we're talking about, especially for small programmes or classes? So I think the key is to understand the difference between an instructor and a coach. So the instructor is the person delivering, one of a better way of explaining it, learn to sail courses, following a strict syllabus with a direct ratio, um, if you're a Discover Sailing Centre, obviously you're well aware of what the instructors are doing. They're delivering the Learn To programmes. 
coaching then builds on this individual sailor's requirement after they've learnt the fundamental skills and a coach's role is to improve on those skills on a um, an individualized basis so being being sailor centered around how they're going to improve that sailor um, so in short an instructor delivers steps one to three of the pathway a coach delivers steps four upwards I don't know if you have anything else to add to that one, Sarah, but um, that was my that was my answer for that. <laughs> no, I think I think. Um, well, thank you, Ian. I think let's uh, finish with that last question. Um, and I would like to say thank you again for you all joining this evening. Um, thank you for your time. Um, and as we said at the start, if we didn't get to your questions or you have any questions following this webinar, um, you're very welcome to get in touch with um, the club support team or with Ian or myself. So uh, we hope you have a great evening and thank you again for joining us.